Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and it is time for your Raw preview. So, Extreme Rules is less than a week away, you know, seven days away. We've got Extreme Rules coming up. And, you know, we've got the last Raw before the pay-per-view with um, three weeks of build-up in there. And, uh, you know... AJ and Roman Reigns has been sort of interesting. I'm looking at the Raw preview, and I'm reading that um, they say the club hasn't won a match yet. Is that right? I, I thought they beat the Usos, but they 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 wrote this in their preview. I don't even remember. Um, guys, let me know if that's accurate or not. You know, I didn't even Google it yet, but I'm taking a look here on the official website saying... They haven't even won. That's pretty pathetic when I think about it. I mean, this is, you know, the Savior's the best thing since sliced bread in WWE. And they haven't even won a match yet. And I know they're writing, oh, well, they technically haven't won the match. And technically it doesn't matter because they did some half-assed beatdown. Now, I will admit that AJ and Roman Reigns has been handled okay. You know, it's average, which is better than the usual disastrous. You know, so that's always a good thing. It's always good when we just get, you know, just average. I should be excited about average. You know, God forbid it's a little bit out of the ordinary or above average. Gadzooks, I mean, imagine if they did something a bit out of the ordinary. But I'm, I'm crazy. Anyway, what else is planned on this show? Potted plants, yes. No, it's not gardening hour at TLC. No, it's, you know, it's no, it's not Martha Stewart's show. We're talking about potted plants. It's the revolution that's sweeping the nation. Last week on Raw, Jericho comes out. The guy who's won multiple world titles, who won a world title from... Stone Cold in the Rock in the same night to become the first ever undisputed champion. This is the same guy who is on Raw cutting a promo on a fucking plant like it was a real person. I never thought that I'd have to come in a video here in the YWC and actually speak those words and discuss this as an actual topic. A plant named Mitch. Why do I got a feeling that Extreme Rules were going to see a new plant? Maybe the plant's name is going to be Bob. I'm not sure, but I got a feeling that this isn't the end of plant mania. You know, um, extreme planting. That this is it shouldn't be called Extreme Rules. I'm thinking back to you know, um, you know, over two years ago when Daniel Bryan and uh, and Kane actually had a a good match, an actual extreme rules match where it was pretty hardcore to say the least. Daniel Bryan sent Kane to a flaming table and jumped off of a forklift when it was raised up in the air. Um, and and uh, why do I feel like we're not going to get anywhere close to that ever again? But, you know, uh, it's all about potted plants. Forget about hardcore. Forget about storytelling. Forget about actually giving characters. <laughs> you know, why Why not make Dean Ambrose a complete psycho? I mean, you know, he's called the lunatic fringe. No, let's just give him a, 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 an imaginary friend called Mitch that happens to be a plant. Are, are you kidding? This is like writing a, a wrestling show for three-year-olds. It's not even a wrestling show. This is, I, I've seen the, the Magic S School Bus actually had more adult material. It, it was actually way more uh, hardcore and um, and I could take it more seriously. I, I seriously could take the Magic School Bus and Arthur and all those PBS shows more seriously than this. I could take Nick Jr. series. Remember the, the, the guy Face that used to be on there, the mascot? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That guy was... He, I could take him more seriously than Dean Ambrose or any of these fucking segments we're getting on Raw, for fuck's sake. I mean, come on. The, the, 
the best they could do, they sit down, they've got a team of 40 riders, and the best thing they could come up with for Dean Ambrose and Jericho to feud over was a, a plant getting damaged. I can't even believe that I, I would ever reach a point. This is, you know, we're all scratching our heads here, making excuses for WWE. Oh, yeah, they got a 2.26, but that's because the basketball game was on. That's because of the international market. Road Dog is telling me on Twitter, Hey, Brad, the ratings, 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 it doesn't matter. This is all anybody ever talks about. As I said, silly me. Concerned about the ratings for, for the, you know, uh, the company that Road Dog works for. Don't worry about the ratings there, Road Dog. You know, when, uh, when, when your salary gets dropped because WWE isn't raking in the big bucks like they used to, you know, I don't want to see you going back on your word. You said ratings don't matter. Or at least you like to pretend like they don't. Oh, and who can forget? Who can forget who's going to be, you know, I want to say debuting. But, um, you know, re-debuting for probably the 90th time. The Shining Stars. Who? Primo and Epico for the 90th time they are re-debuting. I mean, how many more times are we going to change the gimmicks on these guys and before we just give up already? I mean, this is another example of how just, you know, it's the same thing with Damian Sandow, except... That guy was actually over. You know, they gave the guy fucking 10, 12 different gimmicks and he was over with every single one of them. Primo and Epico, you know, they keep on trying. How the hell did these guys not get released? How did a talented guy like Damian Sandow, you know, get on the cutting room floor? I know it was nothing personal against Sandow. They said it was bad timing. Well, how about this? How about this for bad timing? You got a couple of jobbers like Primo and Epico. I'm not saying these guys don't have talent. They do. But, uh, you know, you, if this is the best you could do, you might as well just let these guys go on their way. I mean, obviously the gimmick is going to fail. You're making these guys into Puerto Rican tourists. Let, let, let's go through it. So first... We had Primo and Carlito, a somewhat over tag team. I think most people preferred Carlito on his own, to be quite honest. And they liked the Carlito Caribbean cool gimmick probably a lot better. Then they switch them to Primo and Epico. They make them like a very stereotypical Puerto Rican tag team. Then they put they then they make them Don Mass, and all of a sudden they're not Puerto Rican anymore. They're uh, they're from Spain. They're now they're matadors, um, except it was you know it wasn't like Tito Santana, just a lot lamer. Um, and now they've become tourists. I mean you know the thing is, okay you know wrestlers have gone through many gimmick changes. It's happened before, but not this many gimmick changes. This is ridiculous already, and obviously it's going to fail. Tourists. You know, a tourism guide, this is not going to work. I mean, obviously, obviously, you know, just, you know, based on the track record, these guys, they haven't even tried, even when they switched their gimmicks, they didn't even try to do anything with them unique or anything that was going to get them over. By, by making them put, you know, the same thing, they had video vignettes for the Matadores. They uh, they were going to be the top tag team. They didn't even win the tag titles. Didn't even get close to winning the tag titles ever or being taken seriously. All they did was give them a fucking little miniature bowl and that was it. That's all they did with them. Oh, wow, what great writing. You know, how do we get these guys over? Give them a midget and the midget is the most over thing. Everybody's ignoring Primo and Epico and focusing on the midget. Good job, guys. You know, that, that, that's the best you could come up with is put a midget there. Put a midget, you know, uh, um, just to walk them down to the ring. That was the best you could do to try to get these guys over. 
with this fucking cartoon goofball gimmick. And now it's just a boring ass gimmick, and it's, you know, uh, you don't see anybody talking about it online. You don't see anybody tweeting about it. It's the big debut. You know, what the fuck are they going to do with these guys? I mean, what a time to debut these wishy washy characters. Like, where are the badasses? I mean, like, as I said, all these fucking feminine characters. You know, Fandango, Gold Dust, Hard Truth, Tyler Breeze, all that goofball shit that they're dedicating time to. You know, the New Day with their pink outfits and their cereal pieces and their fucking dildos strapped to their foreheads for fuck's sake. When is it going to end? Now we've got guys with flowers. <laughs> Smell the flowers. You know what? Enough already. I'm sick and tired of it. When are we going to get real and, and, and stop accepting this fucking bullshit already? Making excuses, you know. The, the ratings are not going to go back up, guys. You know, post-extreme rules, maybe they might get a slightly higher rating. But as they said, they're never going to get back to that 3.0. I think, you know, they couldn't even do it post-mania. Couldn't even do it post Mania. Couldn't even get back to their classic subpar 3.0. So you know we've got potted plants, guys with flowers, and I'm sure we're gonna see another exciting chapter with Gold Dongo and uh, the gorgeous truth. I can't wait, guys. Can't wait to see it. Holy fucking shit! This product is in major trouble. <laughs>